fast, and that 50 times as fast, used by human beings to human beings with no chip in sight. Those we're way below using the potential of our, our uh, biological systems, way below. We're stuck in really old-fashioned, crabby ways of using our minds. Well, there are two, two processes that are going on, whereas where our bodies, our biology, is becoming more like, uh, is ruled by design processes, and at the same time, machines are becoming more complex. We're breathing the complexity into them that they become more lifelike. And so which side will win is really the is, big is issue. It a, is it a competition? Well, it's not a competition in that there is a symbiosis, in that we are, uh, we have all sorts of machine extensions. But what will remain the central core of that? Will, be, will it be an expanded biology, or it will be a yeah. transformation That's a fundamental into fundamental question. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm a little concerned about the drift of this conversation, because it sounds kind of technocratic. It sounds like the world seen by a bunch of physicists or biologists or electrical engineers or whatever. And I don't think we all feel that way. I certainly don't, because there is the intuitive, there is the moral, there are the issues of why are we here. That's not going to go away. None of that is affected by this. It may be more complex. So I think we've got to separate the difference between the form that our humanity will be in and the power it will have intellectually and otherwise through the use of machines. Yeah, but their from argument, the essence of it. But their argument is, is that their world becomes so powerful it will overpower what you're saying. And we are getting ripped free from the past. And that's a going I'm to not be saying a that's good. I'm saying that right. that's what they're saying. I mean, that's going to be a tremendous loss. It's going to be a very traumatic, difficult time that we're moving into because this is not going to come easily. This is going to be a traumatic, difficult birth. I mean, we have a, a large population. The kinds of things that we're talking about are going to be available initially to small numbers. There are going to be this, we're being torn free from the past, and that's right, going yeah, to be I very painful. With that. I think there's things which we can make available to masses of people, and we just, we just haven't put any effort, any investment into better use of our brains. Take we an put example. billions into space travel. If you put that amount into looking at software for the brain, you could transform the human race. Take an example if you could extend human lifespan, yeah. if you could double I it. I don't think that's so important. I think the use of what we have, which we underuse tremendously, it doesn't matter whether you live longer or don't live longer. Edward, we're talking a yeah. thousand years from now, not a hundred years from now. A thousand, thousand years. A thousand years, sure. 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 A thousand many. years, I can see we could communicate uh, what we now take half an hour to communicate. You could communicate in 10 seconds. We could communicate so much higher concepts, the higher order languages. I mean, human higher order languages. That's all we get for a thousand years? Well, well let me come that's back to yeah, what right, communicating right, means. Uh, different level here. The man-machine interface and genetics, biotechnology, all that will fit in OK. But I think the key thing when you're looking ahead a thousand years is to take the anthropological look at the biometrics of human development. And if you trace back to the earliest ancestors and look ahead, the average weight by the year 3000 is likely to be 180 to 210 pounds for an adult male. Bigger biomass, more to feed. Uh, in addition What's to the that, basis for that? How do, you, how, do you, how, do you, how do you how do you get that? Well, if you go back and you look at the first hominid line, uh, the boreal antecedents were three six. Aren't you just extrapolating? Three, six, four, five. It's extrapolation. They're just projecting what'll happen in the future. The same thing that happened in the past. That, what are you, nothing okay. wrong with linear progression, not extrapolation. There's a difference. There is a well, we long don't have courses on the and freeway continuous this year. thread of development that ties together. We can, and you can track the development of the height and the weight and the life expectancy and the cranial capacity, all of these things, and you can make some judgments about life but size. But within one generation, within one generation, we could halve human size. I'll tell you how in a moment. Of course. If you halved could. human size, you'd have four times as much space in the world, eight times as much food. How do you do it? When growth hormone is absorbed into a cell, there's something called mm -hmm. a lardon on the surface of the cell, which absorbs growth hormone. We can produce antibodies to the lardons, so they don't but absorb why growth would hormone. Why want to be half their growth well, Exactly yeah. what I'm well, saying. You know, We'd have four, times, by four times the space, eight times the food. You can say we would have four times the space as a society, <laughs> but what individuals would want to be half their current size? Yeah. None. Well, well, one, of the fundamental, one of the fundamental yeah. issues I think that Graham is bringing up is, can we track the future based upon some yeah. very intelligent methods in of the past? Yeah, I, I don't know what the world or the solar system or much less our descendants are going to be like a thousand years from now. What I do know is that we are living through an unprecedented period of time. The, us, our parents to most extent, and certainly our children. It happens once in the history of the world when 
the, uh, the population saturates the Earth, the humans <clears throat> become a perturbing force on the planet mm -hmm. and changing it as a consequence. That only happens once, and we happen to be living in it. And so that's the big news. We're going through a cultural transformation, a, uh, a view, viewpoint transformation. So it's very difficult, to, that's where I don't go along with you, to take some kind of average pattern from the past and try to project it. Well, it's obviously not going to work. Everything goes off scale if, if they're just projected you, straight you've out. You've talked about you know, humanity maturing and, uh, in your words, joining the galactic community. Right, right. Is, 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 do you mean this metaphorically, or do you think there's a lot of no. other guys out there that are waiting for us I to mature it, and wait? I mean it literally. I, of course, it's intuitive. I cannot imagine that of all the possible habitats for things like us throughout the universe, that it only happened once and we happen to be it. That's a possibility. Until we get some other evidence, that'll get ruled out. I predict we'll have other evidence within 50 years. It's not a... It's but even a, without that, Bruce, of course, right. so we tend to expand exponentially in all directions. And we're surely going to conquer the solar system. And once we've done that... Conquer? Well, we're going to develop it. Well, and take it over. Uh, bring it under control. We can live on it. Subdue it. Nature can subdue, subdue it. it. Well, <laughs> turn it to our needs and use it. I think, I think the, the first people will become keystadors of science of sort, as they always have been. And we'll go beyond that. Uh, maybe it'll be our robots or intellectual ancestors and further out into the galaxy. Whether we find anybody or not, it may be better if we don't. But mathematically, historically, we do tend to expand. The sphere expands uh, very quickly. Let You're me try a different cut at it. Uh, I wrote a book once. Uh, it's a rare but not valuable book, because it's out of print. <laughs> it will be in a thousand the, years. <laughs> called Navigating the Future. I wrote it back in 1975, and I looked at a range of scenarios, of, of extremes that I could imagine. The idea to do this is you get some insight in the present, if you can do that. And I, it turned out there was a natural structure that came out. One was what I called the crunch, which we have now been living through, which is uncontrolled changes, the exponential mo growth model, in this case, dislocations, both social and the like. And then you have to believe there's something that happens after that, which I call the afterward, <laughs> where, however, these things are resolved, pleasantly or not, uh, it levels off. Because the, physically, it's not possible to keep growing like this. If it becomes unstable, it would tear the biosphere apart. So somehow, what that really says is that the key to the future is governance and how humanity learns to govern so, itself. So government is destiny? Is that not, not government, okay. uh, governance. Okay, okay. So, uh, let, sure. let me ask a specific question. Right. I'd like everybody to think right. about it for a second. A thousand years from now, very simple question. How many nations will there be in the world? These are your choices, orders of magnitude. One, 10, 100, 1,000, and 10,000. 10,000. 10,000. 10,000. Probably a federation of 150 to 200. A zero, because I don't think that word will be used. The concept will have disappeared. Well, then you're saying, uh, well, what does that mean? Come on, not like to get away with this. Come well, on. it means everybody, that everybody, everybody else gave me a number. That's you gotta, right. You gotta, well, you I gave you zero. Okay, that's, that's fine. Because I don't think you defined the problem and, right. Okay. And, I, and, I, and I agree. I think that the nations, the notion of nations, is being transcended, well, then, and that basically there will be all sorts of levels of control, from local control right. to hierarch governance, hierarchies control. of, of control. And it's like it's like a human human body. And it won't, but it how won't many, be what a nation is. How many okay, cells? So you're, you're saying there'll be zero nations in the current sense. But what, what will be the governance then? Distributed in many, many ways. For example, your letters go across the world in different places without anybody being in charge. There are agreements. Airplanes fly across the world and, and work. There's a lot of different functions of and this yet, earth yet, right though, now. Bruce, Bruce you don't are, have mail on Sunday. Huh? You don't have mail on Sunday. You even have this crude merger well, of church and state in the height of the information so, age. So, big deal. So I, think, I think since 98.5% of our DNA is identical to that of chimpanzees, the power lust is so strong in us, and unfortunately, as we load new computers, that's going to go right with it. And the answer may be one, maybe some big uh, world government. But if a government can rule you, it will. This has always been the history. I don't think, I don't think we'd be talking about governments. It's, say, if you look at the human body, there are thousands, millions of cells. Each one is autonomous, has its own energy, and so on, affected by certain hormones, chemical supply. Yeah. And I think we'll separate into thousands of little nations, whether it's a city, whether it's a village or a re region, There'll be some communal communication, like the bloodstream carrying hormones, but each unit will be integrated and capable of managing its affairs. I think so, so, much your is there is one. so much interaction. Not one, there's a concept that I don't think right. is meaningful thousands. for a thousand years from now. And I think the real question is 
what will humans, will we be human? What, how, how human will we be a thousand yeah. years from now?